Alright, so first we're going to open up our Chromecast Ultra. So, um, it only took uh, Google about four days to get uh, the Chromecast Ultra and the Stadia controller to me, so that was pretty cool. Um, especially with everything shut down so much and uh, and shipping taking so long and so many things, I was surprised. So, pretty cool. I get to get this set up and start taking a look at it today. And I thought we would just kind of go through some of the setup process to get your Stadia going on your TV through your Chrome with your Stadia controller and take a little look at these uh, opening these up and, and what you get. So we got our little Google Chromecast Ultra here. I've not had one before. It's the first time I grabbed one up. Pretty cool, pretty simple. Typical, um, you got your HDMI and then you've got your uh, power port on the bottom. A little bit of a setup instruction. Most everything's done through the app when it comes to Google Chromecast and the Stadia remote. And we got our power cord in there underneath everything else. And you got an Ethernet adapter inside uh, so you can go hardwired on your Google Chromecast, which I actually didn't did wind up needing to do uh, to get things to work properly, but yeah. All right, so here we've got our Stadia controller. Now I opted to get the all black controller. I just think it looked a lot nicer than the white one. It was pretty much the same shipping on all of them, so grab this one up. You know, it has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, your USB-C. Your uh, quick capture button is pretty cool. You can just click for a picture and you can hold it down to get a 30 second uh, clip. So that's pretty cool, a similar feature to Xbox when you want to grab a, a game clip up. We'll get this open up and take a look. And the controller looked a lot nicer than I expected. I hadn't uh, messed with a Stadia controller before. I'm um, definitely glad I grabbed this all black controller. Um, it looks cool. The triggers actually remind me a lot more of a PS4 controller. Um, and a little bit of Xbox style with the A, B, X, Y, but then the the body is more like a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. So it kind of, kind of reminds me of all the controllers in one, really. And you got your USB here. You're going to need to hardwire into a PC if you want to use this on Stadia. Um, otherwise, you'll be wireless with your Google Chromecast Ultra, and you'll also use that wire to charge up the uh, rechargeable battery. And we just got a little bit of our instruction. They're just telling you to download the app. Basically, you turn the controller on, and you're gonna we're gonna do all the setup from there. And I'm gonna go over most of that kind of stuff too. So here we got our Google Chromecast, and we got our all black Stadia controller, and we're ready to go start setting things up. So you're going to want to have the Stadia app downloaded on your um, iPhone or Android device, and you're going to need to use this to uh, set up your con your Stadia controller and to link your Stadia account to your Chromecast that you're setting up. So after you hold the Stadia button to turn your controller on, and you go into the app here, you can see it's going to it's going to find a controller. You're going to click on it. It's going to start the setup. It's a fairly simple process. Your controller. Uh, is going to vibrate uh, when it's ready to go. You're going to click yes. We're going to continue through our privacy notices. <clears throat> We're going to uh, connect the controller to Wi-Fi. That's how it's going to work wirelessly with your Google Chromecast Ultra. And now we are connecting to the Wi-Fi after logging in. This is all being done on my iPhone, on the uh, Stadia app for uh, my iPhone. So now we're connected to Wi-Fi. And that's going to get our controller just about ready to go. It does have an update. We'll kind of speed through here. So, um, yes, once everything was done, I got the blinking white. So once you get to that point, you're going to click it's blinking only white. Unless you have an issue with orange, then you might have a Wi-Fi issue. It did take my controller just a minute to restart, and then we were good to go. Now, when you get to this point, time to play, we need to go to our Chromecast. You're going to see this on your TV telling you to get the Google Home app to set up your Chromecast Ultra. Once you get into there and log into your account, 
that you have Stadia on, you're going to make your home <clears throat> for your Google Ultra device. It's going to find your uh, Google Chrome, your uh, Chromecast here. Once it finds it, we'll be able to connect. There we go. This is all um, still being done through the apps on the iPhone. So now we're going to connect to our Chromecast Ultra that I have connected to my 4K HDR Samsung Q8FN that we're going to be um, setting Stadia up on today. So now I see this code on my TV. We can click yes and agree to the terms. We're going to pick where our Chromecast is located. For me, it's going to be the living room. We're going to log uh, our Chromecast into Wi-Fi. I did have to go hardwired to get mine to work properly, unfortunately, but um, it did connect to Wi-Fi just fine. I just was having a little bit of trouble with Stadia for some reason. I'll be doing some more testing with that, but I went ahead and went hardwired so that we could con so that I could continue on with this video anyway. So we'll get all connected to Wi-Fi on our Chromecast here. There we go, connected. Now it's linking your Google account with your Chromecast Ultra, and then we're going to be linking our Stadia account here soon. All about your Google Assistant setup. You can take a look at that when you're setting up your home app. It's going to ask you if you want to set up for Sirius XM and if you want to link any of your video services. These don't need to be linked to cast them, but they need to be linked to control them with Google Home, with uh, your voice, with the Google Assistant. So once we get through this part, no thanks. All right, so we're almost done with the setup. If everything looks good, you're able to click next here. And it's going to, uh, there's a tutorial here to teach you how to cast if you don't know how to do it. Uh, you can definitely check that out. It'll help you out. Um, I already know how to do that, so we skip through that. And this is what it's going to look like on your home screen. So there's a lot of settings we're not going to get into. This isn't a deep dive into the app. Uh, but one thing you do need to know in ambient mode, in settings, where you edit ambient mode, Stadia, controller, linking code, show. You're going to need to be able to see that to link your Stadia controller. You can turn it off after you're linked because it's auto connect after that, but you're going to need to be able to see it on the screen at first. So you're going to want to turn that option on. Now we're going to jump back over to our Stadia app on our iPhone, and we're going to be able to link the Stadia account to the Chromecast now that the Chromecast is set up and we have the code for our controller. So when you turn your controller on, you're just going to punch the code in that's on the screen and it's going to connect. Now we're in our um, Stadia game selection and store here. Yeah, now you can't purchase your games on your Chromecast Ultra on your TV, so you will be using this app to um, or your PC to purchase your games. So here's where you click on um, adding a Stadia account, and then we, it should show the Chromecast that you just got going. So you're going to click on that and it's going to connect. It's going to ask you for your account access for that Chromecast device. You're going to click connect again and it's going to add your account, your Stadia account, to your Chromecast Ultra connected to your TV. And once you're done with that, you are ready to go to launch Stadia on the TV. So that's what we're going to do. So now here we are set up, taking a look at the TV. This is just uh, sitting at home on ambient mode. You can see the controller code up top. Um, that's what you'll see when you have that option on. You, once you hold the button down to turn the controller on, now that I've already done the code before and set up, it will automatically connect. And now that we're connected, it's automatically going to bring Stadia up. So that's how Stadia is going to come up on your Chromecast. When you connect your controller like that, when you turn it on, it launches Stadia right there on your Google Chromecast. You're going to pick your account. And then once you do that, it's going to load up. I'm going to let it go real time here so you can see so you can see it loading up for you. And there we go. We are on our Google Stadia home screen on the Chromecast Ultra on our 4K TV. And so you're not going to see a store here, but you're going to see any games that you own 
um, that you have access to right across here. It's a pretty simple layout. That's it. You got to go back to the Stadia app or go on your PC to buy more games and add them to your library. Um, hopefully they'll add store functionality and other things as time goes on. Now if you hit your Stadia button while you're sitting at home, you're going to get your connection, which um, this will show you how good your connection is and if you're getting 4K when you're in a game. Um, I'll try to remember to bring that up later. Your linked Stadia controller and your audio for your party chat, your Chromecast volume, your voice chat, and um, who you are or are not speaking to right now. So let's go ahead and let's launch Shadow of the Tomb Raider just to bring up a good 4K HDR game here on the TV. So here we are loaded up in my Shadow of the Tomb Raider save game and um, I've had, had no issues um, with Stadia on my PC yet and uh, now just now booting it up and getting it going for the first time on the TV um, overall was a good experience um, I didn't have the, the setup feels a little bit cumbersome and complicated at first um, but then you know it, it goes pretty well I didn't have any hitches didn't have any real problems I did have to go hardwired here to get the game to run properly I was having some issues with my connection um, without it being hardwired even though I do have really good Wi-Fi so um, other than that though everything has been working really well and the game looks really good like it really looks close to what my Xbox One X would look like with 4K HDR running through this TV yeah overall um, impressed with the technology of Stadia so far even on the PC now seeing the quality of 4K HDR on my TV um, it's lacking in a lot of ways I've talked about in other videos. Um, a lot of people have been pretty upset with Stadia, and rightfully so. I've had issues with the pricing, the amount of games, what's available, um, not having the free tier until recently, things like that. Um, and I could go on. There's been a lot of gripes, but I wanted to give the service on a, an honest chance, especially since I'm covering so many cloud gaming services here on the channel. So, um, But the technology, though, of Stadia, the actual stream quality... Um, and even the controller itself, um, I'm a lot more impressed with than I thought I would be, honestly. Uh, just as a gamer, sitting there at my TV playing a game in 4K HDR, um, it was running really, really well. Uh, here's where I was talking about the connection. So now that we're in-game, and I'm sorry for the horrible camera, um, you can see that we are in 4K HDR with an excellent connection. That is hardwired. Um, I was getting kind of a yellow on the connection before, and I would have HDR, but it definitely wasn't 4K. So I was having an issue with being on Wi-Fi for whatever reason. And again, I do apologize for this camera setup. It's not great. I typically am making my videos at my PC, uh, recording through a couple PCs or whatever. But um, to, to really talk about Stadia and to get uh, the footage I wanted to get, um, I just wanted to set up and show a little bit of those unboxings. I wanted to show it running on my 65-inch Samsung TV in 4K HDR, even though the camera's not really going to pick that up for you. Um, but the smoothness, the experience is there. Um, I personally have had no issues yet with Stadia. I've been using it on PC for almost two weeks. And now having uh, the Chromecast Ultra, uh, as of the time of editing this video, actually I've had it since yesterday, so I've been using it quite a bit. And I have yet to have any problems with my Chromecast Ultra, my Stadia controller, um, or running on PC, whether it be with Chrome or Edge, which I will show you Stadia running in Edge here in just a minute. So we'll uh, go ahead and hop over here back to PC. Here we are, and we are on the Edge browser rather than the Chrome browser. So if you didn't know, you can do that. You can run uh, Stadia just fine with no problems through the Edge browser. You can access everything just as you would on Chrome. Here's where they're talking about wireless support coming for the Stadia controller soon for PC, and I really hope that happens soon. I'm going to continue to use my Xbox One controller when playing on PC because I want to be wireless, but you can plug in USB-C into your PC and use your Stadia controller if you would prefer to do that. So let's just go ahead and do a quick, we'll bring up Shadow of the Tomb Raider, um, same thing here running on the edge browser bring up my save I only went just a little bit farther than I was on the uh, the TV when I was playing showing you there and yeah so I mean it's cool to be able to go from PC to TV and 4k back to another PC um, I've played Stadia on quite a few devices I wish you could play it on iOS but you can't right now so I haven't been able to test that but um, 
definitely, definitely um, been a good experience. It won't be my main platform for gaming. It's too much like another console rather than a cloud gaming service. Um, there's a lot of small player base right now on games that aren't cross-play. And of course, just like GeForce Now, because this is a newer service with Stadia, it's missing a lot. Uh, but I think they'll get there, and the service is really good, and I can't really say not to give it a shot, especially being free, and uh, it might be something you really enjoy. I think Google has a lot of potential here. It's just a matter of whether or not they capitalize on it and grow the service the way that they would need to to get the popularity behind it. But all in all, the technology is there. Um, it's one of the best cloud streaming uh, gaming services I've used as far as getting high quality stream, um, especially on the TV at 4K and even on my PC right now. Um, it's definitely giving me better than 1080. It's not a 4K screen, it's a 1440p screen and there's a lot of times it looks like they're giving me a 1440p uh, stream. It looks pretty darn good. And that is contrary to GeForce Now that's going to give you the 1080p 60, but it is going to link to all of your games and give you a much bigger player base on a lot of those games, especially if you're through Steam uh, or anything like that. All right, guys. Um, thanks a lot for checking out this video. I hope it was helpful. A little bit long. I just wanted to do a quick overview of every of the whole process of getting my my uh, Ultra and my Stadia controller in, getting those set up, and continuing my Stadia experience not only on PC now, but also on my TV. So thanks a lot for checking this video out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Feel free to leave a comment below and give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.